Hi, Bonbon bon here. Today we'll take a look at the one mod for City Skylines 2 that if you're going to be using mods, you really should be running. Skive is hosted by modding giant TDW, but is pretty much supported and used by the entire modding community. So what is Skive? Well, it's the all-in-one mod manager. But why should you use it when you can do mostly everything in-game or within Paradox Mods? Because this is made by the modders, who will always understand modded content far better than even the most proactive developer can ever do. Let alone one who is still fully engaged into salvaging a disastrous product launch into a triple A sandbox that we all deserve. So if you've ever had problems with mods and you've never used Skive, let me assure you, you'll never go back. As always, this tutorial is for the PC version of the game. As I don't have and don't intend to get a console capable of playing City Skylines 2, I can offer no advice on whether or not Skive will even work for you. Anyway, the one scary or potentially off-putting thing with Skive is that it isn't a traditional style mod, which runs within the game. Instead, it runs outside of your game, silently in the background, even when the game is off. Much as you almost certainly do already with a host of other software such as Discord, Epic or your podcast player of choice. Of course, with this being the case, when you eventually decide to uninstall City Skylines 2 in the dim dystopian future, you'll need to manually remove Sky from your system too. But that's a problem for another day. Let's get Skive installed on your system ASAP. Start by navigating to the mod page. A link is included in the description for your convenience and click to add the latest version. At the time of recording, this was 0.10.2.5, but don't worry if your version differs. Once you've added Skive to your playlist and waited for it to download, launch your game and you should be met by a new option at the top of the page to install Skive. Go ahead, choose install from the bottom of the window and in a few moments the mod should open. Remember, this is a window much like any other external app, so you can minimize the taskbar to leave it running, updating mods while you sleep, or you can close it down completely and only start it up again a few minutes before starting your next Skyline session. From the top, we'll start with the dashboard. This shows you highlights such as how many problems you have, how much you've downloaded for the game, the current disk storage, I know, I really need to free some up, along with the latest uploads to PDX mods, and various notification statuses. At the bottom of the window, you'll see the option to edit the dashboard. This allows you to click and drag the widgets around the window to suit your preference. The second option in the menu, PDX Mods, is where you can manually optimize your experience. In one click, you can manually add all your mods to the playlist or take various other bulk actions. You can display your information in compact, list or grid form. I'll be using list for this tutorial. You can even use filters or look for a specific mod by using the search bar near the top. In the main body of the window, you can one click disable, enable or add to a playlist. You can see the version, the author, how long since the last update, how many subscribers and likes it has, and even link directly to the PDX mods page or to its folder on your system. But that isn't the wonder of the mod. Behind the scenes, a team of legends are constantly updating the compatibility report meaning Skive knows which mods are good for your game and which are not. Now let me add a little disclaimer here. Skive is only as good as the latest information it has, so there may be a time lag bubble as new conflicts are discovered. Skive is updated regularly, 
but if you are one of the first to encounter a problem, especially with a new mod, you might be one of the unlucky few. Anyway, speaking of problems, Skive has found some problems in my game. This map theme has a missing dependency. Some mods require other mods to work. Here, I've been advised that I need to subscribe to Map Texture Replacer to allow this theme to work. Next, I have a warning by Achievement Enabler. Warnings aren't necessarily scary, but are worth reading up to check they don't affect your needs. You can then decide if you want to run the mod anyway, or remove it from your game. Sometimes, a mod will do something which another mod can do as well, maybe more effectively or efficiently, or as part of a larger suite of tools. Here I'm being advised to switch over from extended road updates to anarchy. Or sometimes the advice may be just to unsubscribe. In this case, the mod was created to fix an issue with the game, which has since been patched out by the devs and is no longer needed. Next menu item controls your playsets. Here, you can edit your existing mod setup or start a new customized playset for a different city build enabling you to switch between builds without having to manually enable or disable mods, which was a major nightmare for me back in my map review days. Under content, you can view all your packages, which includes all of your save games and custom items, such as maps from the editor. Or you can view your mods or assets separately. The maintenance section includes a look at the compatibility report, where you can view the key issues. Help and logs gives you access to all the logs. If you can't understand a problem with a mod, this is where you can come for detailed information and where you have access to the logs a modder might ask you to send. Utilities includes a safe mode for help in recovering a broken game, which you can't otherwise access. And there's a reset area for clearing and restarting your mods just beware before you use. This is marked in red for a good reason. Finally, we have the options, a menu of settings and preferences to have Skive running in a way most beneficial to you. So, long story short, if you are a PC player and like using mods and assets, Skive is a no-brainer, subscription is essential. There is absolutely no reason not to use it and it might save you hours of heartache in the future. Speaking of other mods, I have plenty more mod tutorials lined up for the coming weeks. So if this interests you, you really should subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. If you enjoyed this presentation or found it helpful, give that like button a click and say hi in the comments. As always, a big howdy to all the bonbon buddies on Patreon and YouTube membership. Your support is truly humbling. Thanks for watching, for commenting, for liking and for subscribing. I've been Bonbon B and you've been very, very welcome.